Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at the best card designs of the 1960s. Now, I don't need to bring in hockey into these cards. I'm going to be doing that in a separate video, because even though in the 1960s there were only two basketball sets, there was so much going on in baseball and especially in football that it's still a pretty crowded decade. Basically, unlike the 1970s, where there was only tops and there was you know some clear team action, in this decade, in the 1960s, there were three different card brands. There was Topps. There was a pretty strong run of Fleer. They, they covered all three of the main sports I'm looking at. And then there was also Philadelphia, which did four sets in football. And so that means that while there are only two basketball sets, there are 13 baseball sets, and there are 18 football sets. So there's plenty to look at. So that's what I'm going to be looking at. And looking at these, these designs, this is a fun one. When the, the card designs get interesting, they can be a lot of fun. And the 1960s was really creative. And so this is really fun because these are some of these are among the best card designs of all time, period. And so this is a really exciting one to do in that regard. Now, I like to start off with an honorable mention, a card that I don't feel truly fits with the, the top five or the bottom five. And in this case, I'm actually surprisingly going with 1965 Topps Football Tall Boys. And this also counts for the 64-65 hockey set as well. They're basically the exact same card. And I can't do a list of the top five cards without mentioning this, but I don't think it's one of the top five cards. So. The Tall Boy was a brilliant concept they came up with, and it's a very bold and, in, in my opinion, an underappreciated card. Not underappreciated by people who know, it's underappreciated by basically everybody else who doesn't realize that brilliant, brilliant cards like this existed. It's amazing. It's just not very interesting. So what I like about it is the bold colors work really well, and these big portrait shots that take up extra real estate. I think it's fantastic. And on the card back, I think the card back uses, uses the real estate on the back really well as well. So to me, this is a very well done card. I just think it's, it's not quite at the level of either refinement or creativity of the other sets we're gonna be looking at. So I love this card, I just don't think it quite fits. So for the actual top five, my number five is probably a pretty controversial choice. But for me, for me personally, I think this, this definitely fits in the top five, which is 1961 Topps Football. In the case of this card, this is all about the portrait. I mean, it is literally all about the portrait. In this case, they did a really good, straightforward, bold portrait of a player in a cutout fashion with a big color field behind. You'll notice that I have two images up here because I want to show you just how bold the players are. That's, that's the whole point of this card. They're very, very bold. And I love the way they do that. They have a simple little box down at the bottom for the text. It's kind of out of the way. It's all about this bold image. And so even though the card is very simplistic, it's basically like using a sledgehammer to fix something. That's fine. Sometimes a sledgehammer works perfectly fine. This is a blunt instrument, but it does exactly what needs to be done. In my opinion, this is like a miniature poster. It has, it feels like the image is much larger than the card. I, I'm amazed that they were able to pull it off. So a huge fan in terms of how this card came out. I know that this is not going to be fully appreciated by most of you guys, but I happen to think that it's just a fantastic card. And I'm not going to talk about the card back because it's a big disappointment, but the card front's great. So for, for number four, this has to be the most controversial of all of these simply because of where I have 1960 Topps Baseball. For a lot of people, this is the greatest card of all time. I don't happen to think that. Obviously, I have it here at number four, but it is a great card design. The problem is, well, it's just not quite at the level, in my opinion, of the first three. Now, the big thing about this card is the image. It has a great, great image. These cards really are known for the image. It also has a really fun array of stuff going on. It has this big color box down at the bottom for text. It has a color box on the side with a black and white cutout image of a player. And the way that all these things come together is really good. And the creativity in terms of how the design comes across is great as well. I'm not a big fan of the, the white border because to me it feels every, like everything's a little bit unmoored. It's not quite, I, it feels almost like they didn't fully design the card. They came up with some great ideas, but they just, just never quite resolved how they were all gonna work. So they kind of put them together and went, yeah, that looks about right. And that's, that's the only drawback I have to the card. It has kind of a clown-like quality to it, which is cool. It has a really good quality to how it reads. 
to the audience. The problem is I just feel like there's something missing on this card. And it's not that it needs something else, it's that there are other cards that have those things that this card doesn't have. So while I give it great props, I can't quite put it at that high level, but I do have to give it tremendous props for the card back, which is done in pretty much the same way, where you had that big box at the bottom, here you have it at the top, and then you have the other panels which are still separated. The way that they took the card front design and stuck it on the back, I think is a really cool little trick that they played. So I love the card, I just happen to love three a lot more. And the first one that I put on here in front of it is 1965 Philadelphia. And this is a football set again, in the case of Philadelphia, they made very basic cards. They basically made a, one card that they kept tweaking year after year. And it, it was all predicated on a great image, great portrait images. And those portrait images are basically showcased by the rest of the card design, which pretty much gets out of the way. Now, in my opinion, the 1965 design is the best of all of those by a long shot. Here, they, have, they don't have any color for the color box. They go with black. And black is always a really good choice to go with because it's a very simplistic approach that does a great job of really emphasizing the counterpoint to whatever is whatever you want to look at. It doesn't draw your eye, but it's a good foundation. And then they have that little box over on the side that they cut out so that the NFL logo could kind of float in its own little square. And so now you have some interest, some different components that are all really well designed in here. To me, this is kind of like the card that you would get an A in a college course for designing because it's got all the right pieces in all the right places in all the right way. And the, the fact that it has no color on the border, it basically has a white border so the elements are all floating, but the way that the elements are all working together, it feels like everything's properly balanced. To me, this is an ideal card. To me, I've always felt that this is the ideal 1960s card. This is the card that I would hold up and say, yeah, this, this was the decade. This was totally the decade. So while it doesn't have the creativity of some of the other sets, to me, it is the most refined. It is the most ideal. I'm not a fan of the red back though. That's the only flaw that I, ha that I see in this card. Otherwise, it's great. So for my number two, I'm going with 1969-70 Topps Basketball. And this is, this is the reemergence of the tall boy. So Topps was coming back into the sport of basketball. Basically, he'd been there for one year prior. But they wanted to take advantage of their reemergence into the sport and make something grand. So they, they dusted off their tall boy and they brought it in. And they came up with a brilliant idea. Normally, you think, okay, tall boy, this is an extra tall card. Basketball players are extra tall. So you can get a lot of really good action shots or do something like that. They, they actually held back from doing that. Instead, they decided to just do a portrait and to use the extra real estate to kind of enhance the portrait. And that was what was brilliant about this. Every one of these cards has a simple, straightforward portrait right in the middle. And then they have some creative filigree. And that's where the card starts to get kind of fun. This is like one of those crazy stupor ideas you come up with. And then you wake up the next morning and you forgot it ever happened. This is like you woke up in the morning and went, oh yeah, right. Sat down and figured out how to make it work. The idea is crazy. Here you have a portrait. And so if you have an oval portrait like that, you want to have some little details on the outside, some cherubs or some little flowers, something like that. So here they did these line drawings of basketball players on all four corners. And so it creates this, this whole frame to the, to the portrait of the player that works beautifully. And then they have the bold colors of the text on the top and on the bottom, which tie the whole card together and they make the whole card a perfect design. To me, this is this is the ideal tall boy. This is the card that I highly doubt anybody is going to challenge as the best tall boy card design of all time. This is this is ideal. And who would have thought of it? That's part of the beauty of it is it makes no sense that somebody would come up with it. But thank heavens they did because boy, they got it right. I love this card and the card back in some ways. It's kind of a waste of the card back space, but I don't mind because I love the way that it all came together. So to me, this is phenomenal. It's just not the greatest card of the decade. And for me, if you know, if you really know cards, you already know where I'm going. Because to me, the greatest card of the 1960s and really on the short list of greatest card designs of all time, 1962 Topps Football. This, this is a great card. This is an amazing card. This is a card that should not have been designed in 1962. It's it looks good for 1992. I mean, it like goes up against the best of 1992. That's how good this card design is. First off, they use the great cheat, a black border. 
black borders are really good at emphasizing what's inside and they made this move in fact i don't know why they hardly ever used black borders on any other cards because it really does emphasize the fact that we're looking at this card because of the player that's the whole point we, we, we want to look at the player so here they did a card where the whole border is constantly showcasing the player right in the middle then they they created a big basically a square shot of the player so it's a large amount of real estate for the, for the portrait shot of the player and again because of the black border all the colors all of the details in the in the portrait really come out and then they had a little text box with the player name that's a color box but it's small enough that the bold color in the color box works as a complement to the much bigger image so that as you're looking at the image you know about the text box you look down at the text box and back up to the image you stay focused on the image you're always aware of the, of the text box they're in balance and then you have that little black and white action shot which is almost framed by the other two and so it gives you some different things to look at but at the end of the day it's always the image that pulls you in every time you look at the image and the the weight of all of the the different sizes and the the intensity of the colors or the detailing all of that works in a beautiful harmony that to me i'm amazed that they were able to come up with something this good in the 1960s the 1980s had some pretty interesting designs but it's not like anything even held a candle to this it was so far removed from this the 70s of course is a disappointment you would expect that 1980s you'd hope they'd start to get into it even in the 1990s tops couldn't quite figure this out this is a phenomenal card and on the card back, I, I like the fact they were using the, the box idea again, kind of playing around with it. I think it reads really well. So to me, this is easily, easily the best card design of the 1960s. And again, I think it's one of the best card designs of all time. So that's my take on the best card designs. I know that, that I have a very unpopular perspective on where the 1960 Topps baseball goes. But other than that, I think it's, I'm personally, I'm really confident in everything that I've said. I'm curious to hear your take on it. So definitely, definitely let me know in the comments below and check out my other videos. If you haven't had a chance, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And thank you very much for watching.